right, welcome back everybody uh, for part two of a conversation with Aaron Yabrudi. And, uh, you know, Aaron, before we uh, took off for the break, we kind of talked about your evolution into the business, how you started a team, um, some of the things that you do, um, you know, the th- some of the things that you did to kind of get your team going, talked about it, social media. Um, so now I want to change gears a little bit and kind of go into um, what would you say some of your biggest differentiators are, you know, when you're out uh, speaking with either sellers or buyers, what do you feel like sets you apart from the competition? We really offer concierge level service to our clients. We are there with them from the beginning to the end and really even pre-beginning, I would say. We spend a lot of time on market prep. We use a stager who comes in and does a consultation. We offer a variety of, I call them service providers, painters, plumbers, handymen, etc. So we work really hard to get things ready before we list, before we do our photography. We have several great photographers, of course, and we show 90 maybe 98% of our listings by appointment. I want to be there. My associates want to be there selling our product. We want to talk about the location. We want to talk about the school district, public, private, proximity to a park, the Beltline, MARTA, all of those things that Maybe a buyer's agent knows, but maybe they don't. And then, of course, we're selling the house. We're getting there early, we're turning on the lights, we're sweeping up. I mean, we have made beds, put away (laughs) dirty laundry. I mean, you name it, we have probably done it. And then we're meeting the inspector, meeting the appraiser with comparables, absolutely always meeting the appraiser. And we do that even if it's our buyer, we expect that the listing agent would do it. But If they're not going to do it for whatever reason, we're happy to do it because I think that's really an important piece of things, Um, obviously negotiating the deal. So we're just there for our clients, however they might need us. And I think that's why a lot of our business is referral based at this point. Wow. So it sounds like you're really hands on um, from, you know, the very, very beginning throughout the entire process. You, You mentioned a couple things that I'd like to elaborate on a little bit, if you don't mind. Uh, you, you mentioned the staging. Tell me a little bit more about that. Do you uh, pay for a certain number of hours or you have somebody to come in and make recommendations and then you you kind of sort that out with the seller and what you're willing to cover and what they are responsible for paying or how does that work? So we do pay for a two hour consultation for all of our clients and we really use all of that time. We walk through I am there with the staging consultant, with the client, if it's a couple, both of them ideally, every inch of the house. And we come up with a to-do list. Most of the time we see our clients executing the to-do list with the help of those people we might recommend, painter, handyman. Sometimes they ask us to find the organizer. Sometimes they need to rent furniture. Sometimes it's an empty house and we put them in touch with someone who will rent everything. So we pay for that consultation and walk them through it and help them coordinate things. But if they're going to use rental furniture or extra time with an organizer, whatever, then we're looking to them to pay that cost. Gotcha. And they can take care of a lot of the depersonalization of the home if there's a lot of pictures up and things of that yes. nature and tidying up of closets and maybe taking some of yes. that stuff and getting it into storage to create that look of large spaces and yes. things of that nature. Um, the other thing that you mentioned was uh, you are a member of your team being hands on at the actual showing, which I think is just amazing, but also necessitates the need for you to have the help in order to do that because there's only one of you and you can't be in two places at one time. Um, and so I, I think that's just fantastic because nobody really knows the house better than you as the listing agent, right? Yes. Yes. And we spend a lot of time with our clients. We actually have a form they complete where they talk about 
what's their favorite thing or some we do a lot of older homes so if there's any special provenance maybe they've got the history of all the people who've lived there so we can share all of those factoids but I think it's really important to sell the house and that's what we want to do for our clients and all of the folks in our group are familiarized with all of our inventory so it's not just a warm body opening the door it's somebody who really understands the house right right and too i'm sure the seller appreciates you being there because they're always anxious to get that feedback what do they think what did they say who you know? was it how long did they stay so we can give that to them right away yeah yeah and i'm sure this has happened to you before when you go and you get the house ready and turn the lights on that kind of thing have you ever had that situation where you've been showing property, all of a sudden you open up that bedroom door and somebody's sleeping in the house? <laughs> yes, we have had that situation. So you eliminate yeah, that we can too eliminate by the surprise. Yeah, for eliminate sure. that's a, that yes. un, un, un easy surprise. We're like, oh, sorry. Um, let's see. I, I think I'd like to um, move into a little bit about you know challenges in the marketplace and what you're seeing. And you know, as we sit here this morning, it's it's Monday, February 10th, and um, it sure feels like April by the standpoint of, you know, I wouldn't say by the weather and the snow we had this <laughs> right, over the weekend, right. but by the way the market is just going gangbusters crazy. I mean, are you feeling that in the markets you work? Definitely. I read an article in January that said January is the new April this year. I think that was put out either by the Atlanta board or the Georgia Association of Realtors. And we definitely feel like that. We are circulating buyer needs, we're advertising, having a price evaluation for something, anything that we can do to get the edge for our buyer clients or our seller clients because inventory is tight everywhere. I mean, we're looking for $150,000 condos and $2.5 million teardowns and everything in between and there's just very little to offer. Right, right. So talk to me a little bit about this conundrum of lack of inventory. Uh, I know that, you know, right now is obviously spring is the time where a lot of sellers consider putting their homes on the market. But as they hear more and more and more about there just being a lack of inventory, are you going on listing appointments now where the sellers are saying, Aaron, I'd love to list, but where are we going to go? Absolutely. And if everyone would relax on that, then I think things would begin to flow. But of course, I understand you don't want to be homeless. So we try to help our seller clients plan. Maybe they're going to negotiate temporary occupancy after the sale so that they can find something. Maybe they're willing to sell, move into a rental, but we're, I guess we're just trying to help them understand all the different scenarios, but encourage them that we'll be there to help them find what they need on the back end. Right, and I think you and I were talking at some point a little while ago too, and you mentioned the this notion of a reverse contingency. Um, so very unusual, but that is a possibility where a seller might say, I'm only willing to sell my house if I can buy. And sometimes they identify a specific thing that they're negotiating in due diligence, but if I can buy another house by X date. So it's tricky. It's hard to get a buyer to accept that, but it does happen. So yeah, yeah. that's an so, option. So instead of the buyer coming and saying, hey, I got a house to sell as part of the contingency, this is the seller saying, look, I'll sell you my house, but I got to have somewhere to go. Exactly. Got it, got it. Any other challenges that you're kind of seeing in the marketplace? Um, you know, just... Uh, co-op, you know, dealing with other co-ops or, you know, just uh, anything in particular that's standing out to you right now that you and your team are dealing with? So our market share, I guess our area of business, we're not seeing issue with some of the iBuyer programs. I know that that is an issue for a lot of our agents. That's not been a problem for us. There are a lot of new agents out there, and that can be a challenge, just trying to work with somebody. But, you know, we want to provide, I was a new agent not too long ago, and, you know, I always want to be courteous and helpful if we see someone who's made a mistake when they're writing a contract, you know, I wouldn't want to get hosed on that. And right. So <clears throat> we would offer advice, but 
we love to co-op. I mean, that was a lesson I learned a long time ago to really treat our fellow agents as colleagues, not competitors. And we love to have a co-oping agent. Sure, sure. So let me ask mm -hmm. you this. Um, you've you've got a lot of responsibility on your shoulders, you know, running running your team and being responsible for the eight plus folks that you have on your team. And I mean, you're a multi-million dollar corporation. I mean, we joked earlier, you're queen of the kingdom, but with that comes pressure. And, you know, so I, I guess my next question would be, are there any um, daily non-negotiables that you have that you just know that if you don't do whatever it is that you're going to tell me here in a second, that it's just, it's going to set the day off on a bad tone or, you know, you just, it's, you know, it's not going to be as great a day as you think it could be. You have anything that, you know, kind Absolutely. of. Absolutely. So I Try, I'm more of a morning person than an evening person, so I make a good effort to be the first one up in my house and really have some quiet time, get my day organized, go through the calendar, start in on the emails, and all the people who work with me know that I love to start sending out emails about 6 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> so it's not, not, and I'm not getting up at 4 in the morning, but I need that quiet time to get organized. I'm starting to try to meditate. That's very hard for me. Um, exercise. I exercise every single day. I mean, I would say, you know, 350 days out of the year. And I like to exercise outside. I walk my dogs. Sometimes I listen to music. A lot of times I make calls and do work. But just being out there, getting some fresh air and getting moving. And then... I'm really trying to start my day off <clears throat> and end my day with some prayer. Okay. So, those, yeah. I mean, that's great. I, th I think those are fantastic non-negotiables. Um, and I love the fact that they're not necessarily real estate related, you know, yes. because there is life outside of real estate. And, you know, in order for us to really kind of perform at our peak, we got to take care of ourselves first. And I love that you take care of your mind, your body, your spirit, all of that. So. And eat, you know, I mean, you got to eat healthy meals on a regular basis. And sometimes it's crazy. I mean, sometimes I will think back on the day, gosh, I've eaten maybe two meals in my car, or maybe three meals in my car, but trying to have some nutrition. Yeah. Well, and sleep too. And sleep. Absolutely. If I don't get good sleep, I'm a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Great advice. I love the non-negotiables. Um, okay. So I'm a new person in the business. I just joined the Buckhead office downstairs and I'm looking around. I'm seeing all these successful people. You obviously being, you know, a standout in one of them. And so I stop you in the hall and I say, Aaron, I want to be like you one day. What would what advice would you have for that new person uh, taking your 15 plus years of experience and things that you've learned? You know, what are some things that you could share with them that are actionable? You know, that you know that you can remember what it was like when you first started out that you could you know give as far as advice. Yeah. Work hard. I mean, that's the number one. Never give up. And I mean, you know, I think these things sound trite cliche maybe, but they're true. So work harder than anyone in your marketplace and you will prevail. I think we talked about geographic farming. I'm a big believer in that. I'm a big believer in spending money. You've got to spend money to make money and you've got to be prepared when you get started in this business, maybe to go for a year, maybe only six months, maybe less than that before you have a closing and so you've got to be financially prepared for that and while you're not making money you've got to be spending some money and if you can come into this with something saved up maybe some sort of part-time job something like that i think that takes the pressure off but working hard coming to the office there are always great people around i mean especially all the Harry Norman offices, but my office, we've got two great brokers who are offering classes. I mean, the education that this company provides, getting involved in that, getting involved with the Ninja program and soaking up as much as you can, being out networking, 
figuring out where you want to be and getting as involved as you can in that community with volunteer work, sponsorships, et cetera. Yeah. I love that getting out um, notion and just making yourself visible. And also the part about coming into the office. Um, was chatting with uh, uh, Alec Lowe the other day over at the North, uh, Buckhead North office. And, you know, I always notice that he's in, around the office. And I, I made the comment of like, Alec, every time I come over here, you're here. It's like, well, you know, I figured that this is my best place to be because if nothing else, I'm learning by osmosis. And if other people see you here working, the likelihood of a referral opportunity comes along. They're that much more likely to give it to you, somebody who's showing effort to your point of working hard versus, you know, staying at home in their PJs and sitting in front of a computer looking up listings thing, like thinking that they're working. Right. Yeah. I mean, you've got to be ready for the day because you never know when you're going to get that call to go meet a buyer, meet a seller and not cool to still be in your PJs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. And working at home too, there's distractions, you know, the laundry chimes and you go, oh, I'll just do a load. And then before you know it, an hour has gone and uh, anyway, so I love it. Love the advice that you would offer up somebody that's newer to the business. Um, you mentioned Harry Norman and some of the education offerings and the Ninja and everything else and appreciate you acknowledging those as, you know, something for uh, a reason to want to be with Harry Norman. But are there other things personally for you that, you know, have been reasons why you love being an agent here at Harry Norman and that things that Harry Norman might do for you that really has helped you grow your business? Well, my primary driver was the marketing that we offer. I mean, I think that it is unsurpassed in Atlanta. The fact that we are the oldest local brand backed by this huge national entity. And I say that to people when I'm meeting with them. You know, you've got the hometown team backed by one of the best companies in the world. And, you know, the world is your oyster here with us. So I love in our office that we have a marketing art director. We've got several graphic designers. We've got Alex Page. We've got our new overall corporate marketing person, Luke. So that was a huge piece of it for me. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and you mentioned Alex and the luxury affiliations. Do you find that you're using those often when you're out and about, especially I would assume it's your price point. We do and we're trying, I mean, we really like the new training and opportunities, I guess, that have been presented with Christie's and we're trying to do a better job of that. Yes, we do, but we're trying to incorporate that more. And I have enjoyed going to some of the conferences. I try to go to one conference a year besides SMC, which I think is terrific, but I went to the Christie's conference two years ago in New York. I went to the Luxury Portfolio in D.C. Hearing about what these different affiliations offer to us from a marketing perspective and then just interacting with people from all over the world, networking, getting referral sources, hearing what other people are doing. I think that those are valuable opportunities that the other companies in Atlanta do not offer. Great, great. Well, I appreciate that. I guess a final question is, um, what anything else that you would like to share with us that I have <clears> not covered in, in my questions? And again, I can't thank you enough for spending this quality time with us. I know Aww. that the listeners out there are going to really take away some good nuggets of information from what you've shared. But anything else that you'd like to share with us? Uh... Well, it's my pleasure. I mean, I, I do love it here. So, you know, I could not do this without a lot of support. And I feel, as I said, I get a lot of support from the company. I get a lot of support from my team. I definitely would not be able to do it without the admin support I have, the associates. Kevin McGlynn has worked with me for longer than we both could count, probably. <laughs> um, so just having that support from a work perspective and then my family. I mean, my husband is there doing all the things that I don't have time to do, driving soccer carpool, cooking dinner. I certainly couldn't do it without him. And, you know, I'm doing it for my family. Mm -hmm. so, and, you know, then definitely have to give it all to God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, again, I love the fact that um, 
you acknowledge the, the, the members of your team and, and your family especially because they really are sometimes the unsung heroes behind the scenes who support and without them none of us would be able to do the things that we love to do and you know the real estate and everything else so well Aaron it's been an absolute pleasure and honor to spend some time with you and, and listen to your story and your advice and everything else and I, I can only imagine you know you had a phenomenal year last year again congratulations Thank you. number one team company wide I mean just incredible performance uh, but I have no doubt that 2020 is even going to be a better year for you and your team and uh, I know that I speak for the entire leadership team here at Harry Normal we cannot wait to see what you guys do in 2020 and beyond so thank you very much for being here oh well thanks for having me i can't wait to hear all the other podcasters oh well they'll be good i promise so thanks again and thanks everybody for joining us we greatly appreciate it stay tuned for more episodes down the line take care